authority, single source, shortest path, problem. And uh, this problem actually is attributed to Dijkstra. We had one uh, tutorial problem on the Dutch flag. I think it came in the exam too. Flag, which is also attributed to Dijkstra. <clears throat> and um, so what we want is, the objective of this is given a graph. So like this, let's say. And this is a weighted graph or a graph with labels. And uh, weighted and directed graphs. No. Weighted and directed graph. What is our objective? Starting from a source the objective is to find find the shortest path from source to destination. And um, so basically here, this could represent, for example, the nodes could be cities. And uh, edges could be flights. And the weights could be the cost. Okay. What we do is, so how do we solve this problem? This again uses what is called a greedy approach. To solve this problem. So initially, We make edges between all cities that have a direct flight, like we have done here. Okay, In this example. So going back to this figure. So these edges correspond to direct flights that exist between these cities. Okay. What we do is the algorithm works as follows.
maintain a set of set S of vertices whose shortest distances from the source are already known. Okay. Where the <clears throat> Okay, already know. Then at each step, I'll go through the algorithm with this example. At each step, we add to S a remaining vertex B from V minus S whose distance from S is as short as possible. Assumption that we make all edges are non-negative. Therefore, any addition, this is very crucial for this algorithm to work, is only positive. B is added such that there is a path from B to S or S to B from path to B. Sorry, there's a path from I should say yes to B because directed graph from S to and <coughs> next what we do is we find a new shortest path from B Path to be that only passes through the vertices of S. From the so what we're doing is we have a source, let's say, single source, right? Let me call it this is from SS SRC to B. And what we're doing is we're making it pass through the vertices of V. At each step, we maintain an array B that maintains distances from source. So all vertices in the graph. Once S 
includes all vertices d then d will hold the shortest path from source to all vertices in g okay <clears throat> so we have to start with an assumption g equal to v comma e where and c is a 2d array that maintains the cos c of i comma j for a path from vertex i to vertex j G. Okay, okay. Let's copy this graph again and uh, run the algorithm on it. So, drawback of not having a board. We have one, two, three. Four, five. So one to two, there is a path, and uh, one to two, there is a path. One to four, there is a path. One to five, there is a path. Two to three, there is a path. Four to three, there is a path, and I think there's a path from four to five also. Yeah, four to five. And there is a path from three to five, I think. Correct? Yeah, three to five. And let's see what the weights of these paths are. These weights are 10 and 100, 10, 30, 100, 30, and 100. And uh, this two to three is what? 50, I think. 50, 10, 60, 50. 10, 60, and 3 to 5 is, how much is 3 to 5? Oh, I didn't have it here. 3 to 5 is also 10. Okay. 3 to 5 is 10. So this is a weighted graph. Okay, so we start off with S equal to the vertex 1. Then we maintain an array D, which gives you the shortest path, direct paths actually. D of 2 is set to 10. Uh, D of 3, there is no path, so we set it to infinity. D of 4 is 30 and D of 5 is 100. Then what we do is, among these distances, we look at the one which is the smallest. So which is the smallest? Two is the, D of two is the smallest. So what we do is, we say S is equal to S union to include the vertex two in this. And then what we do is, now that we have, what do we have now? S consists of vertices 1 and 2. 
Now what we do is we look at whether there is a path by R2 that leads to a shorter distance to 3, 4 and 5 two vertices 3, 4 and 5. So what happens? Um, D of 3, so we say D of 3 now is equal to min of what D of 3 was comma D of 2 um, plus uh, the distance from uh, C of 2 comma 3. So you have to maintain another array, right? We said that 2 comma 3. And of course it is because 3 of 3 was infinite. Therefore, this is min of infinity comma uh, 10 plus 50. And therefore, D of 3 gets updated to 60. Okay. D4 and 5 remain unchanged because there's no path from 2 to 4 or 5. So D4 was what now? 30 and D5 was 100. Now next, among, the, among these three, we find out which is the smallest. We find uh, 4 is the smallest distance. So what we do is we include S is equal to S union 4. Okay. So now what does S consists of? 1, 2, 4. And then we see if there is a shortest path from. We update D of 3 is min of D of 3, comma, uh, D of 4 plus C of 4 comma 3. So what is this now? This is minimum of 60. And what is D of 4? 30 plus 4 comma 3. Distance from 4 to 3 is 10. Oh, sorry. D of 4 is 30. And... Wait a minute, did I put this correctly? This weights 10. Yeah. Three. And now D of three comes equal to 20, 40. Okay. And uh, D of 5 becomes min of 100 comma 100 comma D of 4 plus 60 4 comma 5 100 comma 30 plus much was this? 60. And therefore, there is a path. Therefore, D of 5 gets updated to 90. Okay. So, now we have included. What do we have now? We have only D of 3 and D of 5 is equal to 40, 90. So we do S is equal to S, which was 1, 2, 4, S union 3. And we update D of 5, there is a path. And sure enough, there is a path which is of weight 10. And we add, uh, so we have 90 comma D of 3 plus D of 3, C of 3 comma 5. Okay. 
t comma phi and we have this is minimum of this 90 sorry to minimum of 90 comma what is d of 3 40 plus 10 50 therefore d of phi is becomes 50. So what do we have now? If you look at the distances, d of two, so we got d phi equal to 50. Okay. So now let's look at all the shortest path. We got d of 2 equal to 10. 10, right? d of 2 was 10. Then we got d of 3 is 40. d of 4 is 30. Four, yeah, thirty, and d of five is fifty. So crucial to this is to maintain an array, a two D array, C of i comma g. So what do we fill it up with? Looking at this graph again. We create this to the array. One, two, three, four, and five. We make the distances to itself zero and two. 3, 4, and 5. So distance is 2 was 10. There was no direct path initially. And distance to 4, if I remember, was 30. And this was 100. Right? That's what we had in the original graph. Yeah. 10, 30, and 100. And 2 has only one path to 3, and which is 50. And all others. We set it to infinity and 3 has uh, only one path to 5 and that is 10. Make other this infinite and 4 has a path or oh, two paths to 3 and 5, 10 and 60. Okay and 5 has no path to any other one. So this is how we create it. Now what we'll do is, uh, see now we got the distances from uh, the source node, source node, one to all vertices, two to five, right? But clearly if you notice, you know, look at this path to five, it finally goes from, um, what is the cheapest path to 5? It goes to 2 and if you look at it, the cheapest path to 5 is goes to 2, 2 to 3 and then 5. Right. Oh, sorry. Not that. So, um, which did we get now? 60. Um, 30, 90. We added three, so it should be 70 here. 360, um, 4, 5, 30, 90, 40, 3, 5. D of 3 is 40. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. The best path to this is this one. Sorry. This is the cheapest path 30, 10, and this one. Okay. So, this is the cheapest path that we have from 1 to 5. I'm sorry about that. So, clearly, um, we would like to recover the path. So the question can be, how do we recover this path? 
the path. See, because clearly to reach from 1 to 5, he went 1 to 4, 4 to 3, and 3 to 5. So what we do is for this, we maintain one more array. We maintain, ah, before that, I think I forgot to see how this algorithm completes. I have d5 equal to 50. This is the only vertex that is left. So I finally set s is equal to s union 5 and we are done. So the source vertices consists of all the vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the algorithm is complete. OK, so let's get back to this. We maintain an array P of vertices such that P of V is the equal to the previous vertex. Let's see what that is. Vertex before V in the shortest part. And then we retrace this steps, okay? Let's see how we do this. So initially, because we're starting from vertex one, initially P of V for all vertices, V not equal to one, P of V is set equal to one. So let me give you the complete algorithm right here. This is P modulated by extra. Array. What does it require? It requires the graph. It requires the adjacency matrix C. Then it requires the distances. And it also requires the array P. And you can set all the variable types. There's only pseudo code that I'm writing. I start with the first vertex. Need not be numbered from 0 to 1. And do 10 less than or 2 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. d of i is set to c of 1 comma i. Okay. C matrix. N to do. Okay, complete this. Then we start do. So one vertex is already in the uh, S list. <clears throat> uh, choose a vertex W in B minus S such that D of W is a minimum. Okay. Add W to S. For each vertex, V in B minus S do P of V equals minimum of whatever was the earlier distance d of v comma d of w plus c of w comma v then if d of w plus c of w comma v is less than d of w, then you put p of v is w. End. End for each. Then once all the vertices, once v minus s becomes empty, we retrace the paths. We trace the path of P. For example, P of two equal to one, P 
of 3 equals 4, P of 4 equals 1, P of 5 equals 3. So we find the shortest paths. So what does it tell me? To reach vertex 3, you go to 4 first. And to reach vertex 4, you go to 1. So the path from um, 1, 2, 3 is 1, 2, 4, and then to 3. And uh, the path to 5 is via 3, right? Okay. Path to 5 is 3, path to 3 is 4, so you want 1 to 5, then the path is 1, 4, 3, and 5. This is the path, okay? So what do we do? We reverse beginning from... Uh, order beginning from 5 at vertex 5 to get the path from 5. And so that's that's what we have essentially done here. So reverse of 5, 5 is 3, 3 is 4, 4 is 1. Okay. So, so 5 is 3, but 3 is 4 and 4 is 1. Okay reverse order and then you get the path from the source vertex to the destination vertex. One important point, what is crucial to the working of this algorithm uh, is algorithm is that edges, edge weights are positive. What is interesting is, unlike the coloring problem, maybe said there could be better solutions, Dijkstra guarantees, we'll see this in the next class, guarantees the best solution, even though we made local decisions. The extra is also uses like the coloring problem, a greedy approach to solve. What is greedy here? We just make local decisions. We do not worry about global decisions. You'll learn more about um, global decisions when you um, use what is called dynamic programming in the next course. Okay. So the Weights are positive. So what happens is each time I add a vertex, we'll do the proof of this. So when we are adding a particular vertex here, for example, when I add two, if there was anything shorter, it would have got included here. And that's what we're going to look at. We'll look at the proof of why Dijkstra should work in the next class.